in a market which is very much dominated by the high gloss, highly manicured, immaculate Rolex watch wearing, Ferrari driving, sharp suited real estate agents. Jones in Marbella isn't one of those. Good morning, Alfredo. My name is Pippa Jones. I run and own a company called Jones in Marbella, which is essentially me and a couple of people who sort of help me if I need it in and out. But generally, I'm, I'm a complete lone ranger and um, loving being so at this moment. After the last recession, I joined a very well-known agency on the coast and spent five years with them. Um, and learnt the ropes, um, had a very good training indeed, and then moved on to another agency for a short period of time before realising that this isn't what I wanted to do. I, I just envisaged that I didn't want to get any older and be working in somebody else's office, playing by somebody else's rules, and the opportunity didn't really come along because opportunities don't come along like that. I made it happen. That's my favorite hashtag, hashtag make it happen. You have to make it happen. And it takes a huge leap of faith and you've got to have a large pair of cojones. Um, but it's up until now, touch wood, fingers crossed, it's it's working very well. So how, how long has uh, Jones in Marbella been going? How long have you been solo? Now since January, 2019. So just somewhere over two years, two, nearly two and a half years. Literally, I was sort of thrown out of one situation I was in from one day to the next and left without a job. Um, and it was then that I thought, I'm not going to do this anymore. I wanted to be my own boss. I wanted to develop my relationships the way I felt it was important to do so with the kind of ethics and morals that I have. And so I, I started that way. And that was... 2019 and then of course by the same time in the following year I'd had a fairly good first year it was nothing to write home about but it was okay it was you know I was doing quite well I was encouraged let's put it like that I thought you know maybe I can do this and then the pandemic hit <clears throat> and of course initially one thinks that you know this is disastrous um, but I quickly realized how fortunate I was that I hadn't been working for somebody else and that I hadn't committed to taking on staff in my own right and that I was a real lone ranger because my business just had no overheads and it just went from strength to strength. Not without mentioning any names, the agency that, that you said that you worked at, that was that's quite a large well-known agency. Um, I've known several people leave there and set up their own agencies over the years. So it seems like it's, a, it's something that happens that you see that the number, you crunch the numbers and you think I can do this. And I've also found that quite often it's people are a little bit surprised in terms of what are the priorities and, and what they got to think about when they're setting up an agency. And quite often they're kind of focusing their energies on things that they don't need to be focusing on. So as someone that has just been through it and, and made it through the two years and, and from what I can see doing very well now, is there any advice you better give uh, people thinking about doing the jump? Do they need a start? How much money do they need? Do they, is there anything they shouldn't worry about? You know, is, do they need how many, just tell me a little bit about what you would tell them. It was a buddy of yours. I was thinking of doing the same thing. The, the, the sensible answer for those listening would be, of course, to do it with some backup and do it with some money behind you and, you know, do it with somebody else to fall back on, i.e. a partner, a, a husband, whatever. But, Jonesy just jumped. I just jumped. I had very little in the bank. Um, in fact, I was owed money, as you can imagine. And it was a leap of faith. And I just really had to look at myself in the mirror and give myself the pat on the back and the credit that nobody else had given me up until then. Or not nobody else, but nobody else in a position who I'd been working for before. Um, and I started to take stock of my situation and I realized that my knowledge was quite profound because I had worked particularly in one big company for five years and I'd learned a lot from them. And then the shorter stint that I had in the company after that was a completely different arena, much higher end luxury market. And again, I learned a lot from there. So, you know, both of those situations taught me a huge amount, gave me information and allowed me to 
understand where I wanted to go and did I want to be a cog in a machine with uh, looking after leads in a certain way overseen by my employer did I want to be high-end luxury only really trying to concentrate on on you know getting the big deals um, and I realized that I didn't want either of those I wanted something in between something which would allow me to first and foremost prioritize the relationship with the client that's what I learned because I'd never really had the the freedom to do that and as soon as I started to do that things fell into place now that you've been running for a couple of years do you get most of your business now on a referral basis from other happy clients or do you have your own little sources of leads or I would say referrals are fabulous very special very important of course because you've got a real credibility with those I do marketing via the usual channels and again you know I don't have a lot of properties but I have a number of exclusive properties and of course when they're exclusive properties good quality properties they bring in clients who may not buy that property but we then have the relationship um, but I think the most astonishing thing for me of all has been social media somebody with no background in social media I found a way to really maximize my exposure and my most interesting contacts now are contacts that come through my LinkedIn my Facebook or my Instagram account and they're quite regular and, and this is organically, they just from the from the efforts that you're doing on on these networks. Yeah, just my crazy little ideas in my head. They seem somehow to work. I think they they capture people's imaginations somehow. Um, in a in a market which is very much dominated by the high gloss, highly manicured, immaculate Rolex watch wearing, Ferrari driving, sharp suited real estate agents. Jones in Marbella isn't one of those. You know, I am here. I am. And um, I'm a bit quirky, but I've managed to find an identity which I think stands out a little bit, or so I'm told anyway. So it's, it's working for me. Is there anything that you would do differently? I, I don't think I've wasted time or money. It's been a process, an ongoing process, which day by day, I mean, literally day by day, I see things changing. I've been so fortunate. So it's an, it's an evolution and it's a process which has had to take place. Would I do things differently? Perhaps, as I said at the beginning of this, you know, if I was to advise anybody, I would say start with some money behind you because it's quite frightening when you're upstream without a paddle <laughs> and you've got to really stick at it to make it work. But yeah, I would, I would, I should have, with hindsight, established more of a basis in terms of having money to put into my website to put into my marketing and so on but I didn't I didn't have the money I didn't have that luxury and I knew I wanted to do it so I did it and uh, you're quite different to a lot of the other agents that started I've seen start off because you you've gone on your own little quirky journey even the name of the company Jones and Marbella is, is not the traditional thing you'd expect to see do you think that's actually helped you the fact that you're different so that those who do interact with you remember you and it's not just another agency with the name Marbella and property and luxury and they're somewhere jumbled up I can only tell you what I'm told by people who I who've come across me and who I've never met before and they respond to it and they respond to it in a very positive way I think perhaps maybe once somebody has said Jones in Marbella that's a strange name everybody else including all of the nationalities think it's great because Jones is a worldwide well-known name it's a name that means British you know it's a very everybody knows who Jones is you know Jones Joan, keeping up with the Joneses and Jones in Marbella is literally it does what it says in the tin here I am I'm Jones I'm in Marbella so it's very simple I don't have to spell it to anybody everybody knows how to spell it and my marketing I've sort of fallen into a sort of an image that I've created which people now say to me as soon as I see your posts I know it's you I recognize that that um, graphic I recognize that image and I see what you're trying to do and I think it's great it stands out so it seems to be working yeah so long may it continue it's a lot of work but I love it it's challenging it's exciting and, you know, to really underline it for anybody who thinks about working on their own, it's not easy. 
you've got to be prepared to put yourself out there and get ridiculed because that's what people do when they see you on your own. But it's really important to focus on your relationship with the client. I now have the freedom to engage with my clients in the way that I feel comfortable. I don't have to answer to my boss about why I haven't closed that deal yet. Why I, you know, I don't have to go back to an office and show them numbers. It's my client, my relationship, and that's what makes it good for me. I work well that way because I know that I don't have to hard sell. I don't have to compromise myself. I don't have to push a client towards a property that I wouldn't feel comfortable with. And in fact, you know, I also have the luxury of, and it happened recently, pulling my clients away from a property, a property that I'd showed them. But when we started to investigate, it didn't look good and they wanted it. And I, I, I pulled the deal because I didn't want to be responsible for them going forward with a property which would have caused them problems. So I perhaps wouldn't have been able to do that if I'd been working on a numbers, on a wheel, on a numbers game, you know, having to perform for somebody else. So that's the privilege of it is that I can engage with clients. And of course, inevitably, they all become friends because it's a very personal relationship. I think I think the mistake a lot of them do is they try and replicate what the agent, the big agency they just worked in business model, you know, and not I'm starting out. I got no money. Well, I have very little limited funds. Yeah. I can only do what really matters in year one. Stuff that doesn't matter can wait till year two or three or whatever. That, that's a great point. And that's something I didn't mention is, you know, having the, and it's something that I had, I have still have a very good mentor. Um, and it was one of the first things that he said to me is, Pippa, you've got to learn to differentiate between what's worth it and what's not worth it. Instead of thinking, you know, I, I've got to, take every opportunity he said you've sometimes got to say you know what I'm not going to put any more effort into that and I, I'm still not great at it you know I'm still a, I, maybe I'm a people pleaser I like to think I can succeed I think most the majority of people like the idea of it I know they do but it's whether or not they've got the balls to do it 